Hello, fellow traveler, and welcome to the Hard Light Network. Today, we're going to be talking about abrosexuality. Now, what is that? Uh, you know, it seems like everywhere you go these days, uh, there's nothing new or unique or exciting about anyone anymore, you know? You're a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. You're a musician. I'm a musician. You're a abrosexual. I'm gay. But what is abrosexual? What does that even mean? And where did that come from? Why am I talking about it today? Well, guys, uh, when I first got on the internet this morning, I see this. This is the first article that I come across. I'm abrosexual, but it took me 30 years to understand what it meant. So this is Emma Flint, the uh, author of this article. This is an article uh, from Metro. And <laughs> the person says that they're an abrosexual and it took them 30 years to figure out what that was. Well, I don't have 30 years to figure out what that is, so I'm going to go over here to Google and figure out what exactly an abrosexual is. And it seems like the first option that we get that pops up is from WebMD. You always want to go to WebMD to figure out what exactly is going on with you. Uh, what is abrosexual according to Gabriella Picardo, MD? Abrosexuality is having different levels of sexual or romantic attractions throughout your life. A person who is abrosexual may also have changes in their sexual orientation over time. For example, a person who is abrosexual might be sexually attracted to men at one point, then not sexually attracted to anyone weeks later. Someone who is abrosexual may have periods of different intensities of attraction. Abrosexual is one of more than 100 terms used to label different sexualities. It falls under the multi-sexuality umbrella, which includes people of all identities who are romantically or sexually attracted to more than one gender. And WebMD has laid out the definition of abrosexuality, and here we have our author talking about her experience. So this is the, the article as it reads, guys. When did you decide this? Is this even a label? I've never heard of it. I support you, obviously, but this doesn't sound real. Just some of the words that greeted me when I came out as abrosexual to a close friend back in 2020. Needless to say, we're not friends anymore. She goes on to say, For those of you who don't know what abrosexuality is, in layperson's terms, it simply means when someone's sexual identity fluctuates and changes. I read and reread the text, the dismissiveness of their message cutting deeper each time. Here I was, sharing my identity with someone I trusted, only for them to scoff at my words. Although the easy defense is to say that you can't determine someone's tone from a text message, I think it's clear that the vibe was far from supportive. It was judgmental and immediately doubtful. Sadly, this person isn't the only one who voiced their opinions on my abrosexuality, and I doubt they'll be the last. When I was growing up, I had never heard the term abrosexual. You were either straight, gay, or lesbian, as far as 90s society was concerned. Anything else was made up. Of course, we know that's far from the truth, but societal blind spots mean we learn terms much slower than if they were readily accessible. Often, people don't go looking to educate themselves on different orientations unless it directly affects them. Without that incentive, I found many stick to what they know already. I didn't learn about abrosexuality until two years ago, when I was 30. Up until that point, I'd struggled to identify what my sexuality was because it fluctuated so rapidly. There were times when, that I too scoffed, chastising myself for being so uncertain of who I was. It wasn't that I couldn't make up my mind, but rather, my identity shifted. One day I felt like I was a lesbian, yet days or weeks later I feel more aligned with bisexuality. My sexuality was fluid. Before learning about abrosexuality, I felt lost, as if out to sea. I also felt like a fraud because of how I changed my identity when chatting with loved ones. No one was intentionally hurtful, but I'd get the occasional, but you said you were a lesbian only a week ago. They didn't understand, and at the time, I didn't have the right words to explain myself. It was only when reading the Instagram page of Zoe Stroller, a U.S.-based creator, educator, and social worker who seeks to improve the visibility of LGBTQ community, that I saw the term abrosexuality for the first time. You know in cartoons when a light bulb appears above their heads? That's how it felt when I read their post. Finally, I feel seen. Yet while discovering a new term for me has been hugely beneficial to understanding myself better, to some people, my identity is one that evokes confusion. When I tell people that I'm abrosexual, I'm often greeted by a blank expression, followed by a question of what the term means. And questions are fine, as long as they're respectful. I'm not expecting anyone to know what it means. Hell, I didn't understand until two years ago. 
but you should always listen with respect. I'm happy to say that the rest of my friends and family have been very supportive of my identity and have strived to learn more. One question I have been asked about is how being abrosexual impacts my love life. In short, it doesn't. In the same way, being bisexual doesn't cause a person to feel any different about their partner. I love the person rather than their gender, so it doesn't matter if my sexuality fluctuates while I'm with them. However, even after explaining this, there's always some people who enjoy demanding that I pick a lane so my identity doesn't offend them. I want people to know that just because you don't know or understand an identity doesn't make it less authentic, but it's still hard to hear things like, mate, you're just confused, or just say you're bisexual and be done with it. I refuse to be boxed in by someone else's limited knowledge. We're all learning new things about ourselves all the time. That's what growth and development is about. Eventually, I hope that abrosexuality will be seen as normal, just another identity that someone might have, and not regarded as a way to be on trend, as some of the hurtful comments I've received suggested. Acceptance can only come from education and stepping outside your comfort zone to familiarize yourself with terminology you might not know. There's a whole wealth of LGBTQ plus knowledge online that people would benefit from learning so that ignorance isn't the main language so many of us speak. Without individuals like Stoller, I'd still be in the dark about my sexuality. I'd know that it was ever-changing, but wouldn't know why or what it meant in terms of authenticity. I'd worry I was a fraud or that something was wrong with me. Being closed off from yourself is an awful experience. I wish I knew why my friends reacted to my identity in such a hurtful way. Before coming out as abrosexual, I felt restricted, unable to be myself because I didn't quite know how to accept the parts of me I didn't understand. Now that I know, I can put a name to my identity, and I'm excited to see that fluidity emerges. No, I'm no longer nervous about my sexuality because it makes sense to me. In the end, that's all that really matters. So it seems like, you know, this is like a pretty insignificant thing, at least from my perspective, to, you know, lose an entire friendship over, especially when the person didn't, when the person said in the middle of the message, I support you, obviously, but it just doesn't sound real. And you can't really blame them either, because this term abrosexual is just not in the standard lexicon for the average person. You, you're not going to go around. I, I guarantee you, if you poll 1,000 people, you will barely find one that knows what this term is. Outside of the people that just watched the beginning of this video, I, I don't think anybody here that clicked on this would know what an abrosexual is, to tell you the, the honest truth. There's a specific space on Twitter, a specific space on TikTok, where this sort of identity exists, this sort of mentality exists around identities. And it's just this need to be hyper-specific. Because I think that uh, a pretty good indicator that this is like some sort of like artificial need that she has is when she says that it functionally doesn't change her lifestyle and how she can even acknowledge how this is similar to bisexuality in terms of how it's described, how she lives her life, the people that she's attracted to. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, it just doesn't seem to me like there's not any sort of like caveats that would like distinguish this greatly from, you know, bisexuality. When I tell people that I'm abrosexual, I'm often greeted by a blank expression, followed by a question of what the term means. And I just don't understand why this is a hurtful or harmful thing for someone to, to say. It seems like it'd be pretty normal, especially when like, I can't imagine a scenario and outside of a romantic encounter where you're trying to get with somebody or something like that, where you would even need to bring up your abrosexuality. Cause it's just odd that, you know, she had to write an entire article and I mean, Hey, we're reading it. So I guess that's something, but why, why, why does she need to write an entire article for 146,000 people to, to, to read about her sour grapes issue of not being recognized for her. Admittedly, admittedly it is, does sound like a made up term. Whenever you come, if someone came to me and was like, bro, I'm a bro sexual. I'd be like, Hey bro, congrats. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This just isn't something that I should see like ruining relationships over. This isn't something that I would uh, divide over my family over. Um, and the way that she's described it again is not radically different. Even when you look up and you type in abrosexual online, it gives you this term, novosexuality, which is the same exact thing. It's a, it's a different term. It's a different word. They have different colors on this, on the flag. But it, they, if you click on them, they mean the same exact thing. It uses the same 
words to describe it. And then even right here, where is it? There it is. Sexual fluidity. This was even easier. It just says bisexuality right here. Part of a series on bisexuality. So is it hurtful that Wikipedia classifies it? Is it harmful and negative? Is this going to like ruin your day? Are you going to stop using Wikipedia? What is the problem with it? And again, like, why are people so upset? Why is she so upset? But I don't know. Maybe I'm being insensitive, guys. You know, leave it in the comments because it really doesn't seem like her life is crazy or, 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 or insane. It just seems like, honest to God, this comes from, this seems like this comes from a place of like, I need to be unique. I need to be special. And like, it's not good enough that like, I love who I love and I don't have to explain it outside of that. It's like, I need a special term to make me feel comfortable internally with who I am. Like, what, what is that about? What she's describing here, the the sort of fulfillment, the sense of self knowledge, the the comfortable the the being comfortable with yourself, none of that has anything to do with a word that you call yourself. There's nothing there's nothing within a definitional phrase that necessitates like if I didn't have a word, which I don't by the way, I don't have like a single word. I can't sum up my entire identity in a single word, fellas. I can't I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys right now. There's literally not a single word in any language that describes my entire personality, that describes my entire identity. And I'm comfortable with that. It doesn't make me feel like I'm less of a person. It doesn't make me feel like I'm wafting wistfully through the air. It doesn't make me feel like a plastic bag drifting through the wind. I feel like this is a normal issue that everyone goes through. I'm glad that she's now at a place in her life where she feels comfortable with herself and she understands herself better. I don't think it's really healthy to need to define it if you get where I'm coming from. But yeah, guys, this was just like a silly one-off article. I'm not going to be doing more videos like this in the future, I don't think. This is just something that popped up on my feed this morning. What do you guys think? Uh, do you think this term is like necessary? I mean, we already have so many other ones. Like WebMD was saying, this term comes from a list of over 100 other similar terms. So I think we could probably narrow that down to just maybe a handful. Just for the sake of like every person on the planet that is not this chick. Because... Um, we all have to, she, she wants us to learn all these like hyper specific phrases. And again, I would like her to, I would like to see an article from her. Maybe we'll do the follow up on this. I, maybe I just lied. Um, if she does a follow up and explains how abrosexual is somehow radically different from, uh, novosexual or bisexual, then, then, then I'll read the article. We'll give her, we'll, we'll signal boost it. We'll put another, uh, we'll put some more eyes on it and we'll do another react video to it. I don't understand the hyper specificity here, but that's going to do it for this video today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like and until next time, love you guys. Safe travels.